as promised, I said I would create a video uh, about how to create basically a facsimile of this uh, 3D house uh, created for the site of Sunviza. I'm sorry if I mispronounced that. So if I decided that um, this house or a similar looking house would be situated roughly here, the way I would go about it would be this to add a cube again add our primitive here I will move it so that it is roughly aligned with um, the house floor roughly and we do want it to snap to one of these corners here yep and then we will rotate it just so it is roughly aligned with that and if this gets in the way you can turn it off and um, if you would rather work from the model itself let's say it starts here because perhaps the wall was separate so first you'll want to decide what sort of height so if we wanted to go back to our um 1.5 height we'll do that here um, and lock that there the width of walls and stuff won't really matter at this point and you'll see why in a moment but anyway so that is all we need to do in object mode now we will select our edges so perhaps i want to move we'll select this edge and we'll move it to match with this edge essentially we'll select this edge and we'll bring it over to match this edge and then we will find this edge over here and I've got that one this one and we will drag it to over here and so the downside to this approach is that it is uh, fitted nicely to the floor of our uh, laser scan mesh uh, and so most uh, tutorials will be working on the op will be operating on the assumption that um, you're working with a even cube and this is obviously not an even cube um, but the upside is is that it matches our floor plan so there are a bit of um, extra complications here but I think it's worth it so right so we have our sort of oblong rectangle what's next so you can go about this in a couple different ways, but uh, one way that I like to do it is to start with the roof. And so as you might have guessed, we'll start with a loop cut. Uh, roughly in the middle would be ideal. And we will solidify that there. So we we'll want to select this edge here that we have highlighted. And we will hit G. Now, you'll want to do this so that it is side on, so you can see what is happening. And you can sort of control bits of it, but also you could go with the Y. If you hold down Y, it'll control um, and control, actually, if you can reach that far with one hand. And um, it will essentially control what direction the uh, roof moves in. And so Y is roughly um, up and down at this point. This might not be the case depending on where you started, but it is a way to get it roughly into place uh, and then you can move it with G and control from there. So now we have a roof, or at least what resembles a roof. And so if you're happy with that, uh, we can switch to faces mode, select both of these, and we're going to extrude them out ever so slightly. And so Again, you can do uh, Control and Y to make sure it, actually it won't. Um, you can use Control anyway to kind of set the distance here, or here you can decide how far out you want this to go. So if I wanted it at 0 0.3, um, that will set it there. If you've decided that your roofs should be about 30 centimeters wide so now we might want to create a bit of an overhang on our 
roof here. And so again, we'll want to navigate very delicately. Uh, so you'll want to hold shift and click both ends here. And again, we will extrude, except we want to extrude um, we want to extrude region come on, if you left click and hold you'll want to extrude along normals and so you can move it ever so slight well that's much too far obviously um, 0 0.3 again we can see how that looks that's not too bad and then we may want to even move those so that they follow the uh, direction of the roof slightly and so you'll want to hit the G button and again you may want to hold Y just so that it controls the direction it moves in and that looks roughly correct so there we are and you can do the same on this side as well and of course on the other side and so here's our yellow guy here and three just so everything's nice and even now if you weren't able to get this completely right so you can see that there's a bit of intersection going on here and um, so what we're going to do here and we'll go to mesh clean up merge by distance and something like that so you can see as you sort of meet that threshold it'll close up again so that's quite useful when you have a bit of a gap there and so you can do that for each of your might not want to do that for too many of these except for Oops. do the same because if it's a problem in one area it'll probably be a problem in another it's probably okay and again it's obviously the problem here remember that so that's useful and it looks like it's a problem over here too So that's our roof sorted now. Make sure that the undersides don't look a bit weird now. Yep, that's all fine. Good. So there's the basics of our house. Now if we want to look at the reference image we're working from again, you can see that there's sort of an inset sort of porch area. There's a support bar here cross beam and there's a little add-on section there so you can see that there's a sort of porch area so what we want to use here is called the inset function and so you can kind of get started with it but then you'll want to open this uh, and so boundary and offset even are quite useful here as well as interpolate so you might want to set this again at 0 0.3 just because that's making everything nice and even but up to you and if you want to create the uh, pillar that we had there 
You might want to select individual and that'll treat each of these faces differently and sort of create a uh, pillar. Uh, well, at least the makings of a pillar here in the center. Now we'll want to use our extrude following normals. And so we want this to go inwards, right? And so how far is too far for a nice um, porch? Maybe we'll have a meter since we were pretty close to that anyway. I believe in the tutorial online I went for a two. We'll see how that looks with our other sort of house here. Up to you, maybe 1.5 is better. Even this sort of process might be telling us something about, um, so the other house I was uh, reconstructing was on the top of the hill. And so does it look proportionally correct to use the same dimensions on top of the hill? Or does it, is this speaking to sort of the size uh, or the status of the people living down the hill versus up top the hill? All these things just need to be thought about. So because we want this to look like a post and not a dividing wall, we'll use our friend loop cut. And we'll want it roughly in the center. And we'll try and do this again on the other side as well. And so that should be that. And now if we go inside our house slightly, we can switch to faces, select these guys, you might want to make them. And let's delete this guy. Now, this is where I think, this is when control Z is your friend. So do we want to delete the vertices, the edges, or just the faces? So I think you only want to delete the face here. And so you see uh, that these edges are still here, which is good. And we'll do the same here. And so now if we select edges, we should be able to fill in this area. So what we want to do is fill this edge here. And then we'll want to fill this edge here. And then these edges. Here. There. So that is our post started here. You might have wanted to make a smaller post, which you can do. Remember, Control Z is your friend. Or Z. Right. So now this is all looking rather angular. And so prehistoric houses aren't generally angular, as far as we know. Usually we expect a few rounded edges here and there. Remember to save. Very important. So at this point, we'll want to add some beveling so that we can have something that is a bit more rounded. And so you'll want to select some edges that you want beveled to the same degree, if that makes sense. And so once you've selected those edges, you can hit Control B. And you can see that this can very quickly go wrong. Um, and so you'll want to change a few of the settings. So it's down here at the bottom. You can see there's all sorts of uh, options to change. And so we'll want to increase the amount of segments because that'll have a smoother sort of transition here. And you can change other things about the bevel as well. Or maybe not that. And so you can see at least it's a bit more rounded here. It might be that you wanted to add more bevel to include um, the edges here. Control this a bit easier here. Ah, 
hand. You can do this all sorts of different ways. Um, obviously that's a bit dense there, but looks okay. And maybe we want these guys beveled to the same degree as these guys over here. Control B, Control, this is me holding Control. Remember you can always hit Control Z if you don't like how it's looking. That looks okay really. And these guys here. And it could be something like that. There we go. So that is roughly the basics for the reconstructed prehistoric house here. Um, I'll leave it to you to decide how you would go about adding the crossbeam here. Um, where would you put it? How high up? Um, how tall were your people here? Uh, but overall, that uh, are, those are the basics to get you going. Um, and so that is exercise four. Um, obviously, there's a bit more information on uh, texturing and materials and stuff. Um, in the exercise, which totally optional, but um, if it appeals to you, then go for it.